you ever heard that expression, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change? <laughs> well, our weather's changing. Maybe it's true for you too. Maybe your weather will be changing. Do you know that the uh, same thing can be said about Christians? Yeah, you know, one of those types of people that you can't stand. Well, wait five years. They'll get over it. <laughs> Not over being a Christian, but you'll probably change, and so will they. Because if you wait on the Lord, then He will change them. Nobody stays the same. That's one fact of Christianity. They're either getting better or they're getting worse because they are not standing still. As much as some people like to say they're standing still, God is always at work inside changing. Besides that, your body's changing. You know, I don't know about you guys, but you know, me, I'm getting a little older. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm getting a little wiser. Now, I don't know, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag there. You know, I'm not sure if age goes with wisdom, but somehow experience with knowledge, you know, if you apply it the right way, it could become wisdom. If maybe the Spirit of God applies that two things together, it kind of mixes it up, stirs it up, and you get the right conclusion from it. You know, walking with God and talking with Him and letting Him tell you what it means. Because there's a lot of people that run around, you know, building up some experiences, but they don't always get the right conclusions out of their experiences. You know, and there's a lot of people that are getting older, but that doesn't mean they're getting better. <laughs> and there are a lot of people getting a lot of knowledge, but that doesn't mean they got any wisdom. So you see, it's kind of a mixed bag there. you got to kind of mix it all together and let God kind of sort it out. Because He's the only one that really can, and He's the one who's changing people regularly. Matter of fact, I think He's also the one that changes the weather. Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't the Scripture say that He calls to the north wind and it blows? He sends the angels, you know, to different corners of the earth and they cause different things to happen. I think God can, you know, like, influence the weather. <laughs> yeah. He causes change. And change is going to happen to you. So, you kind of not want to get stuck in a rut, you know, because if you think that change isn't going to happen or you don't like change, you're in for a big surprise because it's going to happen. As a matter of fact, it's going to happen soon. So, one of the things that you can do is to expect change. Expect things to be different than what they are today. Expect that there will be something either better or different or some different way of looking at it that will give you a better perspective on it. Because I don't run around like one of those kind of like, you know, gaga goo goo, you know, happy happy smiley smiley face people saying, yes, it's all going to always be better for you. It's going to get better and better and better. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> it's going to get like hell on earth, <laughs> bluntly, you know, and you're going to go through it one way or another, you know, either God's going to get you through it, you know, to kind of prepare you for it, you know, and kind of like take you through it. Or you're going to learn that you have to adapt to it, you know. And maybe he'll rescue some of you out of it, you know, kind of like a rapture, you know. Rapture, you get you gone, you know, so you can get somewhere else so you don't got to be there. Or maybe he's going to hide you, you know, someplace so you can kind of deal with what's going to be going on there. But one way or another, you know, it ain't going to get better. <laughs> I think you figured that out about the economy. <laughs> well... The economy does what the economy does. It's kind of like that's why they call it the economy. It kind of goes, mm -hmm, and you don't really know what it's going to do because partially man is in control, partially God is in control, and partially Satan's in control. Well, he's not really in control, but he influences things. So there's a lot about economies that, you know, you really don't understand all of it, but you could really trust in God for it because God said he provides for all of your needs. So God's economy is always providing for it. But maybe your economy sucks because you want to accumulate things for yourself. That's going to change. <laughs> Trust me, it will change. If you start abiding in him and learning what he has for you, 
you may be content with what's so what's they with such things as you already have and not always trying to get more because a lot of times when people want to get more they go into debt to get it and then sooner or later just like Jesus said hey if you're in debt you're gonna stay there until you pay the last farthing the last penny the last decimal point and me hey if I'm looking at a rapture you know I'm kind of thinking you know I don't really want to be in debt here you know I'd rather be like you know free to fly than you know chained to die <laughs> I want to be free to fly, then chained to die. Think about that for a while, because guess what? <laughs> what you think you know about the rapture, you might not know everything there is. And Jesus already warned us. Oops. So I kind of like want to get disentangled from the world so that I'm not entangled in the world, so I don't become like Lot's wife, you know, kind of like stuck where I'm supposed to be, you know, when I'm supposed to be heading the other direction. Just trying to give you a heads up. Things are going to change. But you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You know, I always find that interesting. is because people say, well, they're good people. No, they're not. I always tell people that, and they always get bad at me. Well, yes, they are. They're good people. No, they're not. What do you mean they're not? As Jesus said, don't call anyone good except your Father in Heaven. He's the only good there is. Other than that, no. Because if you really kind of cut away the onion layers, you know, and kind of peel them back one by one, you'd find that there's some pretty selfish motivations when you finally get down underneath it all. Sometimes it's selfishness for personal gain. Sometimes it's selfishness for feeling better about yourself. Sometimes it's selfishness for this love that I, oh, I love my children, so I want the best for them, you know, which is really a selfish kind of love. <laughs> really, it's purely selfish because that's not what they want or God wants, but it's what you want. See? Selfish. Ah, sorry. Peel it back. And you keep peeling back when you start getting down to it. Man, you got to come up with the same thing the Bible says. There is none good. No, not one. Because good is God. Everything else is kind of like once you peel it back, you find out where it's really at. Oh, well. I guess God knows us better than we know ourselves. I think he's got a plan for that. It's going to change. There is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Oops! Now wait a minute, God. Come on now. You mean to tell me you can go the whole world over and you can't find a just man that sins not? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. What about what about the Mormons? Now they look good. Uh -uh. What about the Quakers? They look good. Uh -uh. What about the Catholics? They look good. Uh -uh. What about never mind. Right. <laughs> There's none. Ooh, guess what? Even playing field. I'm sorry, but while we like to say in the Constitution, all men are created equal and are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, I got a better one for you. All men are created equal sinners. <laughs> They're all no good. <laughs> if you think you got good inside, peel it back. Guess what? When you expose that chest, there's no S there. You're not Superman. <laughs> you are S for sinner. And you're not a saint. I'm sorry. The more you learn about God and how He forgives you, the more you realize just how corrupt you really are. <laughs> and just how wonderful God is. Because, wow, He still deals with you? Oh, man. Imagine a God like that. He would still even have a relationship with you, knowing full well that in you there dwelleth no good thing. <laughs> wow. Really? None? Yet? Ninguno? Whip, flip, zip. Yep. You're no good. Sorry. That's gone. <laughs> he knows you. Oh, well. How can he be clean that is born of a woman? Well, that's a good question. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. In other words, if you can't make yourself better, then why would you be trying to? If you can't get good, then what is your goal? So you see, kind of like trying to be good for the sake of being good, isn't going to get it because you ain't going to get it. You got it? I hope so, because I hate to repeat that. If you're trying to be good for the sake of being good, you ain't going to get it because you ain't got it because you didn't get it the way that he said you're going to get it because you're going to get it in the end from him because you don't got it. 
Get it? <laughs> Good. I hate to repeat that one because that was different than the first one. In <laughs> case you didn't notice. Better the second time. <laughs> Isn't it always? Uh, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Boy, ain't that the truth. Man, every single day I can look in a mirror and I can find out just what kind of pervert, what kind of messed up, what kind of jerk, what kind of idiot, what kind of dummy I am. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, <laughs> I've seen you in action and <laughs> sometimes you make me feel good. <laughs> but we're kind of like all stuck there, so you know, we're all in the same boat. You know, guess what? It ain't floating. We're sinking. Oh boy. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Mama. You did what? Oh, come on. Now, you see, my mother, interesting, had an interesting perspective on this scripture, though she wasn't really claiming to use this scripture as her inspiration. <laughs> I think she was using the nature of women and men to talk about her viewpoint of this scripture. And she said she didn't want to hear about genealogies, and she didn't want to discuss it and look up family trees, because she said, you weren't there at the time, so you don't know who was sleeping with who. Okay, mom. <laughs> wow, back up from mom. <laughs> we had a mom attack. <laughs> My mother's a truck stop waitress, so you know she had a reality check for everybody. <laughs> Woo, that's one way of looking at it. So you know she pretty much kind of like squashed kind of this whole step parent and parent and all this other junk. Says, look, you are where you are, the way you are, the way it is. You know, kind of like that's what God does. Says, look, you don't know. I could have done immaculate conception on you. <laughs> I don't think so. Not by how sitter you are. Whoa. But you see, shaping in iniquity, that means you weren't born good. You've got no good in you. The good has already been corrupted because it was corrupted way back when. You ain't going to be good until you get where you're going because until corruption puts on incorruption, you're corrupted. Bingo. And you knew that. The Lord hath put away thy sin, and thou shalt not die. Whom he justified, him he also glorified. We all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Lord. For if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, then you are walking worthy of God who has called you into his kingdom and glory. Wow! So, we just got to do it. And he gets us through it, and then we got it when we get there. Because he makes us be there by what he's already done, so he imputes to us righteousness and justifies us as though we were good. Because we're really not. But, you know, as far as God's concerned, good. Little stamp of approval, stamp don't wear off unless you kind of like, you know, really want to make it a mess, you know, and then you could be wind up in a mess, and I don't think you want to mess with that, do you? <laughs> So let's just stick with saved, once saved, always saved, sort of, you know, maybe, kind of, walk worthy of the calling, you know, then you don't have to worry about whether you are, you aren't, or you will be, or you can't be, or you are, should have, and it's already been accomplished, or didn't, or will be, whether it's written or not, and you get away with sin, or do sin, or complain about sin, or act like sin, because you can't figure it out. It was done for you. It was one for you. God did it. God's working it. God's accomplishing it. And your part is to just live it. <laughs> I think that's why we call it grace. You know, kind of that thing that's been given to us freely, you know, freely to receive, you know, that part, you know, that we freely got it because we believe in Jesus. So, no offense to you, but, you know, you ain't looking so good, <laughs> sinner. But, you know what? You've been made righteous by what God has done. And he's looking really good because of what he did. Now, what you did, I don't know, but don't do it, okay? Get it? <laughs> be careful. You don't want to be doing that. You know what I'm talking about. Be careful. Don't mess it up. Don't mess with the man if he's got a plan. Just walk with God and talk with him and follow him and enjoy him because things are going to change. You're going to make it one way or another. Kicking and screaming and dragging and pulled by the hair, maybe. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> You know, or maybe like, you know, God's going to compress you by making all of your life feel like hell on earth until you finally turn it over to him and say, I give up. <laughs> this life's too hard. You know, I, I need a little help. 
uh, since you made life, God, do you think maybe you could help me out here? I seem to be missing the point. And God says, yes, I know. Now I can work with you. <laughs> and you begin to get an easier life. You know, that's kind of what they mean by abundant. You know, it's kind of like, guess what? You got this, like, kind of protection. Keeps all that other stuff and it gets deflected away, most of it, you know. And then you got to do your part along, along the way. So, I don't know about you, but I kind of like the deal that I'm in, you know. I know that, you know, looking in the mirror, I don't look so good sometimes. But, you know, things are going to change. And he's going to change me just because he loves me. How about you? Is he doing it to you too? <laughs>